All right, the information that they're fixing to give here on Fox, in which I'd hardly ever listen to Fox. Sometimes I do. It seems like each one of them has their own pro quo quo and who they want to bad mouth and who they want to support. Very biased. But the things that they're talking about this morning after the Jerusalem Israel bombing um, I find it to be very disturbing especially when you get to looking at the death toll nearly 1,300 in Israel <coughs> and things are just now beginning to escalate in these skirmishes that are now um, very obvious that are going to only intensify. So whenever you hear what they have to say, don't take it with a grain of salt. You keep in mind that we had a, I guess it was a four, four star general up there that was trying to, um, trying to restrain various <clears throat> programs that was allotted to our United States military that I don't know if they've got all that straightened out or not. So there's definitely, definitely a internal problem here in America regarding our Pentagon pertaining to the people in charge. Order. Which leads me to believe that all of this, regardless whether it was Waco, Oklahoma bombing, 9-11, and then leading to something like this here, which is going to be basically their 9-11, it makes me wonder just exactly who really is calling the shots up there in Washington, D.C. Because we know that no matter what president that we put in charge, Republican or Democrat, by and large, they're just they're just a, a, a figurine. They're, they're just a, a, an object that you put on a mantle, somebody to look at. And every four years, they make the public feel good with their so-called democracy here, um, which it is a whole lot better than communism, uh, uh, authoritarianism. But basically, the president is just somebody to look at. He's on the mantle. And I've said this before, it doesn't matter if they change uh, the instrument on the mantle towards either looking like the white horse or the, or the black horse or looking this way or that way. Ultimately, in the end, the people that are in charge are the people that's going to remain in charge. Now, you can shuffle the cards around any way you want to, but whenever it's all said and done with, it is the one percenters that has gotten America in the position that America is in right now, not just on a monetary financial status, but also on a political war status. Going all the way back into the late 80s, whenever I think that the White House was hijacked during Ronald Reagan's administration because there never was any type of positive movement coming from the White House. As a matter of fact, if anything, all I have gotten is negative out of the White House. Even me going on a mission shortly after Desert Storm or Desert Shield, I get them mixed up, uh, whichever one had, had broken out in the early 90s, I think it was 91, and basically uh, wanted to assassinate my character by saying that I was on my way to Washington, D.C. to assassinate one of our American presidents, which was nothing more than a mere, mere, Mortal lie coming from Wheeling, West Virginia, that Jolene Nugent took a part of because she was my scheduled public defender at the time that wound up having her own uh, her own uh, private business there in Wheeling. And I guess uh, she has retired now. Uh, but these people that get in these positions that make the, that hoodoo and, and bamboozle and make the type of money that they're making, 
they're not they're not up there working for the will of the people. They're up there working for themselves. And it's very obvious that whenever they get ready to retire, my God, look at the type of home that they're living in. Look at their bank accounts. Look at the look at the way that they live. They're not up there working for we the people. And so many politicians we have seen again and again and again that has basically portrayed their own people. So I am really truly beginning to wonder about all this, especially whenever you get to listen to what you're going to listen to here this morning on this particular show, that I have found it to be absolutely appalling. Appalling. Please listen. And that's fine that he said that yesterday, but we have to be with them in the long run. There's a long history, especially with President Biden or President Obama before him, after four, seven, 10, 14 day, uh, days of Israeli operations against terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, backed by Iran, uh, of going wobbly, of demanding restraint, uh, of seeking a ceasefire. We can't do that this time. Uh, Congressman, your reaction, and I also want to get your reaction to this: these weapons being used by the Palestinians, Hamas. Where did they get these weapons? We've talked a lot about all of the weaponry left on the ground in Afghanistan. I'm wondering what your thoughts are in terms of uh, where the Palestinians get their weaponry that they're using against Israel. Well, uh, Senator Cotton's absolutely right. Uh, in the near term, uh, you're already seeing, you're hearing a lot of, of positive rhetoric from the administration. You're seeing a military aid package going, uh, going over. Uh, Hamas is, I visited the Iron Dome headquarters and their tactics are to overwhelm the Iron Dome with dumb rockets uh, and then to follow up with precision guided. And that's what I'm, I'm waiting on the other shoe to drop from Hezbollah as well. They have precision guided missiles that once the Iron Dome has run dry, can go in at Israeli critical infrastructure. In terms of how they're arming themselves, again, 100% Iran, they have created uh, a highway uh, from Western Afghanistan all the way through Iraq, through portions of Syria, into Lebanon, uh, and into uh, Gaza, uh, that they are funneling uh, ammunition, weapons, fighters, uh, advisors, uh, and, you know, everything Hamas needs. And I do think we're going to see some type of new encrypted communications uh, that they were used to thwart our intelligence and Israeli intelligence community. Uh, I suspect that was part of this as well. Uh, and we are hearing very credible reports that what we left behind in Afghanistan has made its way uh, to Gaza and to Lebanon as well. Wow. Well, and, and you called that months ago, uh, that that weaponry left uh, in Afghanistan and that botched withdrawal would come back to haunt us. I want to look at this tweet that you put out. You posted on social media yesterday, and I want you to walk us through more of this and what you're posting here. Let's put up that tweet. You say, my understanding is that the Iranian regime agent is still working in the Pentagon with access to classified systems and still a Navy intel reservist as Iran-backed terrorists ravaged Israel. Seriously, what can you tell us about this? My understanding from talking to people in the Pentagon, uh, Maria, is that the chief of staff of all of our special operations uh, was one of Robert O'Malley's you know, uh, a network of Iran apologists. Uh, we know from emails that, she, that this woman uh, was reporting back to the Iranian foreign ministry after she briefed members of Congress on their nuclear program. She has the highest clearances. She, and my understanding is she still has access to top secret networks, is still on the job. Uh, and, and I mean, it just, that blows my mind that she is still sitting there at the field, uh, essentially as an Iranian spy, uh, along so with the fact that that Biden's chief negotiator through this new Iran deal, Robert O'Malley, has been completely sidelined. Uh, and at least he's been removed. But why haven't the rest of his spy ring uh, been removed? And Maria, it speaks to the bigger issue. Can I just say one thing? A lot of talk about the $6 billion uh, in our Iran policy. I think we need a lot more focus on the $30 billion Iran is pulling in a year in oil sales to China that this administration has turned a blind eye in terms of sanction enforcement. Iran's making exponentially more money on selling that oil 
that we're allowing because we've, we've walked away from maximum pressure. That's just incredible. We have talked about this appeasement strategy, the president's foreign policy, enabling our adversaries to get inside the gates, if you will, of America. We've talked about it much with regard to communist China, but you also have to question whether or not uh, terrorists are also inside the gates based on what you just said. Well, not only do we have a high-level uh, spy ring that's been uncovered, although Congress hasn't received briefings yet on exactly what is going on, we've got the high-level spy ring in Washington, and then we have a wide-open southern border with Lord knows who uh, is, is being funneled through there. Though we do have a pass of the Iranian IRGC working with Mexican cartels, uh, they attempted to bomb a restaurant. Yeah in Washington, D.C. to take out the Saudi ambassador. So it's not as though there's not a history of, uh, of the Iranians working with Mexican drug cartels to take advantage of our open border. And yeah. uh, they could be doing it again right now as we speak. Well, this is a good point that you make in terms of the lack of briefings. You're on the Foreign Affairs Committee. You do not have a Speaker of the House. The House hoping to elect a new Speaker this week. You'll be holding all the Republicans holding a closed-door forum tomorrow. Uh, Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise remain the front runners, Congressman. Who are you uh, endorsing for the Speaker's job? And can you tell us if, in fact, this process is getting expedited given the war on Israel? Well, Maria, I think uh, Jim, uh, Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise would be would both be fantastic in their own right. Uh, we've got to move forward. At the end of the day, I have supported uh, Jim Jordan and endorsed him. Uh, I believe he can both uh, he can bring all sides uh, of our conference together, drive it forward. He has the backing of President Trump, uh, which uh, which I think is tremendous. We've just got to we've got to get our heads out of our rear end here, uh, because at the end of the day, we are working against House Democrats, Senate Democrats, and the entire administration to get some common sense policy back into place and get this country back on track. We can't afford right. delays. Right, yes. Maria? We were supposed to be voting on four more appropriations bills to so that we uh, avoid another uh, shutdown, showdown. Uh, in just a few weeks, we should have been getting our work done this week, yeah. and we could be doing more aid for Israel right now, but we're stuck. Right. And and Jim Jordan told me yesterday when he joined me on Sunday Morning Futures that he believes he can unite the part of the Republicans and that he does have the votes. Do you believe he has the votes? From what I'm seeing, he has a lot of support, Maria. I mean, I, look, okay. I think there is tremendous support for both, but what we're going to need then is those who uh, in a secret ballot are going to have to then publicly all unite and vote for uh, one Republican, one conservative to move us forward. Okay, we will be watching the process. Congressman, thank you. Michael Waltz joining yeah. us this morning. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's get to Cheryl Pisoni with other headlines this morning. Cheryl. Yeah, Maria, we are watching a couple of other stories this morning for you. After closing two chicken plants and announcing job cuts earlier this year, Tyson Foods is closing former processing facilities in another move to cut costs. Plants in Arkansas, Indiana, and Missouri. Tyson not saying how many jobs are going to be eliminated. Shares of Tyson Foods are fractionally moving lower this morning. Then there is this, Maria. Activist investor Nelson Peltz has amassed a $2.5 billion stake in the Walt Disney Company and is preparing to make a second run to gain board seats. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Peltz's Tryon Fund Management uh, is making this move in response to the recent decline of Disney stock. Shares of Disney down 16% year to date, moving a little bit higher this morning, up a little more than 1%. Maria, and back to you. All right, Cheryl, thanks very much. Israeli forces recapturing areas near the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, Hamas launched 120 rockets toward two Israeli cities, all happening this morning. There have now been uh, 1,300 deaths so far, uh, including 800 in Israel alone. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Iran was behind Hamas's plan to attack Israel. Iranian security officials giving the terrorists the green light to launch the attack just last week. Joining me right now is retired arm uh, Brigadier General uh, Anthony Tata. He is also the author of Total Emperor. Uh, General, thank you very much for being here this morning. Assess the situation for us as we understand 
uh, Israeli forces are cutting off food, fuel, and water to the Gaza Strip right now. Hey, Maria, great to be with you. Yeah, uh, so uh, you heard Netanyahu come out two days ago and say this is war. That uh, term had a lot of meaning because it gave him and the government authorities to cross the border and, and do the things that they needed to do and suspend other types of restraints that might have been on them militarily. So this is total war. And so they are coming in with their forces to, uh, they have really three missions here. One is to retrieve the hostages the best they can. Two is to uh, restore their border. And three is to defeat and or destroy uh, Hamas. Uh, but they also have some strategic issues that they're facing here. As, as you just mentioned, Iran is funding this. They're behind this. As uh, my friend Michael Walks just said, uh, there's a rat line from Afghanistan all the way through now uh, into uh, Lebanon and, and uh, the southern parts, uh, the western parts of Iraq and Jordan. And, and so the, the rat lines are there to continuously supply this war uh, with uh, pretty technologically advanced equipment and so the Israeli uh, intelligence uh, operations that they're known for uh, somehow they missed this and there's an elaborate tunnel network that is in uh, that comes in from uh, the Gaza area and I've been in those tunnels uh, obviously on the Israeli side uh, when I was there a few years ago to see those and and uh, they're filled with uh, uh, lights and, and the communications lines and logistics and supplies. And so it's not surprising to me that this uh, happened through tunnels over the air, through the sea. It was a very coordinated, well-planned attack that Hamas did. And remember, Hamas is just the military arm of the Palestinian Authority. So uh, there's, uh, and it's really uh, the military arm of Iran uh, that wants to wipe uh, Israel off the face of the earth. General, what are your thoughts in terms of the possibility this spills over into a broader and a wider regional conflict? Now, we was warned. We was warned and threatened. Going all the way back to 1993. Of them declaring war on not only Israel, but also on America. We have played tick for tack all this time. And now COVID has happened. Now January 6th has happened. Now Russia and Ukraine has happened. And now we're seeing what we're seeing on a bigger scale that I personally believe, I'm not making a prediction, but I'm personally believing that it's going to even get worse. And before it's all said and done with, they're going to have to drag the... The two-face, I, I almost used the B word, but I, I, I'm not going to do it. Um, they're going to have to go in and rectify whoever it is that is buying us out the way that we have been bought out for the past 25, 30 plus years. Because according to my understanding, pertaining to internal uh, intel these mistakes that continue to keep happening again and again and again you wonder if their mistakes are if they was planned in only looking like mistakes you know there has been a lot a lot of talk since 9-11 that there was no way that that was done ignorantly or unintentionally. Now, I don't know all the pros and cons about 9-11, but I do know that the people that I was engaged with here in Martin, Tennessee in 1988, that I have two witnesses to verify that is still living as far as I know, Dwayne Davis and Dayton Earl Penick, one of them is my cousin, one of them is, is a uh, friend of mine, both of them are still living here in the state of Tennessee, One's in O'Brien County, one's in Henry County. But um, those people that I met was Arabs. They wasn't Afghanistans. They wasn't Pakistans. 
And, and trust me, I know the difference between the two because it was the Afghanistans or the Pakistans. I think it was more like the Afghanistan people that basically targeted me back whenever I had gone through my ordeal towards falling off of a building, doing construction work and falling almost four floors, 37 feet in total, um, breaking both legs, crushing both ankles. I was targeted after that within about six months of a group of people that come here to Martin off the exchange, um, the university exchange, the school exchange group that basically um, intervened in my marriage and took my marriage over, caused me to go through a divorce pertaining to my first wife. So I definitely know the difference between Afghanistans and Saudi Arabians. Arabs. I still believe and I'll always believe that it was an internal movement because of what occurred during the Bush administration of Desert Storm or Desert Shield or both that prompted us being attacked on 9-11 and they didn't just attack our military installations, they attacked the citizens. They attacked uh, the civilians, which is a down and dirty blow. That That's basically a terrorism type blow. The same thing with what we're seeing right now pertaining to the Israelis being attacked. They're not just attacking the, the military compound bases. They're, they're attacking the citizens. They're attacking regular everyday common people. So somebody has obviously dropped the ball here again. Now, it's up to us to get to the bottom of it towards whether or not it was actually done unintentionally or intentionally. Because I still believe that whenever the events happen in my life that changed the dynamics of the Cold War over in Russia, that basically opened up the channels pertaining to the global alliances, uh, the Pacific and the Atlantic global alliances, I truly believe that at that point in time, and I can prove this. I was not just targeted to agitate, aggravate, or to um, chastise me. I was targeted to destroy me. That even the demonic figures was working through various individuals right here locally. Basically, that's where it started. That they was dead set that I was not going to be able to achieve that in which what the Heavenly Father had given me to achieve. And now we're seeing the repercussions of it on every level imaginable. Please listen to some more of what this individual has to say, because this was the part that I was getting at that just is absolutely is overwhelming. Overwhelming. Well, uh, Maria, I certainly think that that's Iran's hope. Uh, what they saw, you know, going back to President Trump and the Abraham Accords, uh, which this administration did not continue uh, for whatever insane reason. And then uh, you see the, uh, you know, moderation of, of countries like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, and, and talks uh, between UAE and Israel. Uh, Iran can't have that. They're, they have to have a destabilized uh, Middle East to further their own self-interest which is to continuously fight American presence in the Middle East and, and to destroy uh, Israel. So uh, I, I think we have to be very careful to support Israel in defeating Hamas and then uh, arranging some type of diplomatic solution, uh, which, which bothers me because Antony Blinken is probably the most incompetent Secretary of State this country has ever had. Uh, when you see that uh, the State Department uh, it issues a, you know, both sides need to stand down uh, from their Palestinian, the uh, Office of Palestinian Affairs Twitter account. Uh, it's really disgusting what uh, has emanated from this uh, Department of State. And I don't know what kind of legitimate authority that they can negotiate from, given their lack of uh, expertise, uh, their neophytes uh, in this business. And, and as you heard Michael Walt say, we got spies inside the DOD and the, the State Department. So it's going to be tough, but we got to keep this from uh, their neophytes negotiate from 
given their lack of uh, expertise, uh, their neophytes uh, in this business. And, and as you heard Michael Walt say, we got spies inside the DOD and the, the State Department. So it's going to be tough, but we got to keep this from uh, ebbing into a, a broader war, um, or that could be, and that could undo a lot of the hard work that was done, uh, particularly in the previous administration. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, the Abraham Accords uh, suggested we were going to see peace in the Middle East uh, until the Biden administration reversed the Abraham Accords. Uh, General, you just mentioned Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. It's extraordinary to me that virtually everybody we have spoken with uh, reiterates that Iran is behind uh, Hamas uh, and, and fueling uh, Hamas's aggression. And yet here's what the Secretary of State said this weekend. Watch this. In this moment, we don't have um, anything that uh, shows us that Iran was directly involved in this attack and, and planning it or carrying out, but that's something we're looking at very carefully, and we've got to see where the facts lead. But we do know uh, that Iran's had a long relationship with Hamas. Uh, General, we know that the administration has been all weekend trying to defend uh, freeing up $6 billion to Iran. Uh, saying that it has nothing to do with what they have done here, Hamas, on uh, uh, Israel. Your thoughts? So now you start to yeah. get now you start to get a little bit of an idea of the reason why that it was Bill Clinton that wanted to dis dismantle the CIA. Wanted to dismantle it because whenever you put these people in these positions, they are prone of being bought off. They are prone of getting favoritisms. They are prone in actually working against the American people's interest versus working for. So because there's entirely too many cooks in the kitchen pertaining to the CIA, there's breaches. And these breaches has costed people's lives, especially American people's lives. Because if things would have been handled properly in 1988, whenever Ronald Reagan finally succeeded in convincing the superpowers that the world was not going to be destroyed by humanity, but rather it was going to be destroyed the way that God intended for it to be destroyed, pertaining to the opening of the seals, pertaining to biblical Bible prophecy, they did not act upon to that movement. They only got halfway into it, and then they retaliated, and the way that they retaliated was basically trying to destroy my life. And they would have done, they would have, if I would have been in a, in a third world country, and this, and this would have taken place in my life, there is no doubt I would have done already, probably been executed with a bullet or, or poisoned. Or thrown off a building, or I don't know, being being put in a, a a jet airplane, and suddenly somebody kick you out the freaking door in the ocean. Whenever they put me on a jet streamer with a pilot, a co-pilot, a nurse, a doctor, two Secret Service agents, and myself. Going from Virginia over to Raleigh, North Carolina, and basically traveling just under Mach 1, a little under 700 miles an hour, before we broke the sound barrier. Whenever somebody is willing to spend that kind of money on somebody, they are really, really wanting to dig deep in understanding who that individual is. And they're really, really digging deep toward wanting to use um, leverages to be able to destroy that person's life. And that's exactly what they've done to me. My son can verify this. My ex-wife can verify this. Other people in my life can verify this. I'm not just spewing out uh, uh, innuendos that I cannot prove. I can prove the... the uh, the testimony that I'm talking about and how come there were certain individuals in the Homeland Security, Secret Service, and, and even right here in Nashville, Tennessee, up at the Capitol building, that was so dead set that they wanted to destroy Dennis 
James Jackson's life. It falls back into the same category of how come King Herod was so dead set that he was willing to actually sacrifice his own people in having estimated 5,000 toddlers, infants, killed at his own order to try to stop the prophecy of Jesus Christ coming forth. It fits under the same, the same intensity pretense as what happened then. And I continue to keep telling people that, and I get no response from my viewers. I get, uh, I don't get no telephone calls. I don't get nobody come by, by here and talking to me. I don't get no emails. I don't get none of the above. It's like we're, we're on some sort of a, a uh, um, uh, um, si silent treatment or something, uh, to where, uh, no, no radio frequency, uh, uh, in other words, everybody has to be real quiet. In the meantime, while everybody's being quiet and while I'm still putting out this information, things is getting worse. We're going in the opposite direction towards peace that it talks about in Revelation. He corralled the 51 uh, intelligence experts to say Hunter Biden's laptop was fake. Uh, so uh, we've got a real issue here. Uh, we, we, we did unfreeze six billion in assets. And even if that money hasn't been spent, and, and what, what psychological effect does it have on Iran and exactly. on Israel? Exactly. Iran says, okay, I got six billion coming in to pay my mortgage. I can use this other six billion that I was going to use for other things. And if I'm Israel, I think, wow, they're unfreezing six billion, as you heard Michael Walt say, and they're not stopping the 20 billion that they're getting in oil. So uh, this, uh, you know, and, and they've got spies and. DOD, I, when I was the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations, Low Intensity Conflict, worked for me. The chief of staff is an Iranian spy and has not been uh, expelled. Uh, we and, and we have this wide open border that was talked about. So uh, it's all connected. The incompetence is breathtaking, and our national security is at risk. And a lot of people are talking about this in the abstract. Uh, you've got the AOCs, the squad, and, and all, all that crowd. They talk about these things as, as if they're academic exercises. You, you, you just said 800 Israelis were killed over the weekend and more, probably. Thousands were, were wounded. Uh, hundreds were captured. This is not academic. This is not some esoteric thing. This is real life, and we have obligations and commitments to our number one ally in the region, Israel. And, and we can't be splitting hairs because we're more worried about maintaining power and putting spin on it and, and, and those kinds of things, when in fact this administration is just strictly concerned about maintaining power so that they can aggrandize themselves. Well, it's just stunning that we are talking about PR messaging in the face of all of this. What is the possibility? Now, is all this not appalling to y'all? Of the region. There is some reports uh, of uh, concern or, or worries over the possibility of a Hezbollah rocket attacks uh, from Lebanon. Your thoughts there, and how would you assess the U.S.'s response so far? to all of this in terms of supporting Israel. General, the Department of Defense said it was deploying the Ford Aircraft Carrier Battle Group. That includes one Aegis cruiser, four Aegis destroyers. Uh, we don't know uh, of the other warships that are outlined uh, for battle. Your thoughts? Yeah, Marie, I think that's a, a very good move. Um, I, I applaud the uh, move in the um, you know, the, what we call four acres of sovereign real estate there with an aircraft carrier plus its attendant ships uh, to to the east in the Mediterranean and and uh, to provide support, uh, at least a show of force to Israel uh, that may uh, dampen what uh, uh, follow on uh, efforts that Iran and, and Hezbollah uh, may be thinking about. Uh, but rest assured, this is a a, a planned operation. It was a very sophisticated attack, uh, and we can't uh, just uh, uh, leave it to the Israelis, uh, though they may want to keep it to themselves.
And, and and so what we really need to do is start planning in a joint and combined way with the Israelis to help them strategically remove the threat from Iran and Hezbollah. All right, we will leave it there and keep following your guidance. General, thanks very much for being here this morning. General Anthony Tata joining us as we get more information uh, coming out of Israel. Stay with us. We've got breaking news on the other side of this. Now, was all that not alarming to y'all as an Americans in understanding that this thing is fundamental? This thing is eternal pertaining to national security issues that keeps continually oversight or using the word uh, gross negligence. It ain't gross negligence. It's high treason. It's absolutely high treason, and that's exactly what Donald J. Trump talked about in regards towards the system being broken or the system being rigged. It's not just rigged. It's not just broken. The system has be has actually turned to the war on Israel. Pres it's actually turned on the American people, especially the church world American people, the true authentic gospel, the true authentic um, meek, it's turned on us. So it's not just my life that they was trying to destroy, but it's all true born-again Christians. Now, if you're a phony baloney, you know, if, you, if you're out here and you're taking money on, on, on the side and, and they know that you're corrupt, um, they won't bother you. You are not a threat to them. But if you are real in your anointing that God has placed on your life, I promise you, they see you as a actual threat. And the people that are the threat are the people that's accusing people such as myself as being the threat. We have been bought off. It's very obvious with all our factories shutting down and now all of a sudden our major retail conglomerates basically getting wealthy and, I mean... The Walton family is one of the most powerful, richest families in the world. You can't tell me that the American people have not been sold out. We got sold down the river. And there's still not no accountability. If shit like this, excuse my French, but if stuff like this was to have went on, back either before the Civil War or shortly after the Civil War, even leading to the early 1900s, pertaining to World War I or World War II, it would have been looked upon as being treasonous. And according to my understanding, the laws of, of uh, treason in the military status can be pursued in the form of execution. Especially whenever it has costed the lives of not only the American people, but our allies. The support for Israel is, quote, rock solid and unwavering. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures with his plans to support Israel. Watch. Well, there will be some resolution on the floor to support the state of Israel. I want to give them what they need to win. And we've, we've been doing that with, with David Sling and Iron Dome, these weapon systems, that, that, that we've worked together with Israel to make sure that they can defend themselves and, and, and stave off all these evil terrorists who want to come and, and attack their, uh, the, 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 the Israeli people. So I want to do what, what it takes to win this. Doug Collins, your reaction to what you heard? Jim Jordan, of course, one of the leading contenders for the next Speaker of the House. Yeah, it's good. that's the first thing that Republicans have got to do this week, Maria. They've got to get a Speaker of the House. And, and unfortunately, I'm hearing, I, I know we've had some reports that they've got, they're getting closer. The question is not, can they get somebody out of conference? The question is, can they get 218 or 217 votes on the floor? 
and and that's become a contentious point and i'm hopefully this will maybe shake them to realize that they need to get this thing done because as jim said we've got to do more than just a resolution of support we're actually going to have to put some uh other policies monies and things uh toward that but it's been really concerning this morning that also holding the administration accountable holding uh, us accountable to make sure we are supporting and not having uh, breaches in uh intelligence reports and finding out how this could have started number one but also holding iran accountable for this as well you got to go back to its original concept whenever the seed was born. Whenever the original seed was born, going before Gorbachev into Brezhnev's era, that said, we will take the American people over and never fire a shot. This whole concept has been towards diminishing us, weakening us, and causing us to basically turn on one another. Plus, financially speaking, whenever it comes to the stability of America, of us being $33 trillion in debt, how can we even afford to go to war? Our backs has been pushed against a corner on all this. And now, I think it's up to the American people to figure out and find out why. Who would have ever allowed for this to have gotten in the shape that it's gotten in. And you've got to start back in the 80s in the Ronald Reagan administration because that's whenever there was a major movement in the early 80s of not only taking all the mental patients and putting them out on the streets, especially if they wasn't a uh, harm uh, to society, but, but there was a, a movement towards um, no longer backing the uh, dollar bill with gold bullion, and there was actually a movement for about 20 years of taking in God we trust off of the American currency. So, obviously, this has been well planned with us being $33 trillion in debt. And we can't just look at part of the, of the, uh, of the facts, but we need to look at all the facts to determine What's actually occurring here? And I'm telling you right now, if it was to have been gone going on during World War One or World War Two or shortly before or shortly after the Civil War, it would have been looked upon as being treasonous and somebody could possibly stand against the wall. And, you know, whenever you get to looking at Dick Cheney towards him being worth a value at like four million, but leaving the leaving office in eight years being worth um Four four hundred million or something like that, uh, or forty million or something like that. Um, Bilderberg, Halliburton, or whatever it was, uh, their name. But if you get to looking at these people that was playing games with the American people's lives and with the American people's money towards one of them, uh, we have one sector of the government that goes in and blows up a bridge, but then we have another sector of the government that we pay a couple million dollars for or $500,000 or $200,000 or whatever to build a bridge back. We have been played. We have absolutely been played. And I think it's time that the American people got down to the bottom of it towards what the hell is going on? And these investigations should have been thoroughly investigated within days after 9-11. Because I still say that it was a major breach whenever you see an airplane fly into a, an Empire State Building, basically, a high-rise, and then a few minutes later, here comes another one, taking another pot shot. They should have shot the second plane out of the sky without questions. But instead, we was fumbling around uh, not knowing our rear ends from a hole in the ground. It is 8 a.m. on the East Coast. Breaking news out of the Middle East. Israeli Defense Minister ordering all power to be cut from Gaza. There's no power, no food, no fuel. As 130 Israeli hostages are now being held in Gaza. Fox News correspondent Benjamin Hall is live right now in London with more. Benjamin. Now you wonder how come people like the Davidians down in Mount Carmel, Waco, Texas, was basically a doomsday preppers. This is the reason why people see the occurrences that's going on and it's absolutely freaking them out. It's not just 
gun sales that has suddenly went out the roof, but every other kind of loose ends are now being explored that wasn't explored 25, 30 plus years ago that now are. That now are. So you can't say that certain people within our government has not either failed us ignorantly or possibly turned against us intentionally. And that's the part that the investigators, that's the part that the White House needs needs to uh, investigate. And my advice would be to start with Homeland Security, Secret Service. Regardless of what branch, division, field office, uh, regardless whether it's Memphis, um, Nashville, Tennessee, or Washington, D.C., you got field offices all over America. Um, these are the people that have allowed for this to get in the shape that it's in. And these are the people that tried to cover up something that shouldn't have been covered up to the American people going back into the late 80s with Ronald Reagan being able to succeed in accomplishing the ending of the Cold War that was a stem off towards what happened or the falling of the Berlin Wall. Whenever they talk about all these works uh, blowing up or all these works uh, becoming in vain, pertaining to, to uh, what has went on, Trust me, it's all in the making right now of uh, basically not only destroying Israel, but destroying America. And for some reason, that never truly got a, a, a clear, um, rest, uh, you know, a, cl a clear statement to the American people that now we're seeing our weaknesses. So if we can see our own weaknesses, don't you think that our enemies can see our weaknesses? Sure they can. You know, whenever now we're focusing our, our attention on the Middle East, what do you think what do you think Putin is thinking right now? Ooh, this is my opportunity. I can increase my forces and I can go in and basically just just level the Ukrainians. And why everybody is focused on this event, this fire, trying to put this fire out. Uh, on the opposite side of the world, I'll be able to do what I need to do and nobody will pay any attention to it. It's diversions. But the bottom line is everybody is after us. We're under siege. The Christian society is under siege and it's really bad whenever you have your own people that's against your own Christian society even though we stand and give reverence to the fact that we are a Christian nation. It's it's really an hypocrisy. It really is. Important by going in and starting to clean this out. He was telling the others who don't, uh, who are not associated with Hamas, to get out. But you know, with Hamas operating as much as they do in Gaza City, Gaza Strip area, it is really interesting to me. Is this maybe is this going to become the breaking point to where if you want true peace in this region, you're going to have to not let terrorists live among you and put stuff in your hospitals and everything else. Also, earlier the report that came out earlier, Maria, we talked about about having uh, issues at the Pentagon with our intelligence and possibly being compromised intelligence uh, that Representative Mike Walls talked about. Also, I think it should be driving the story today. Yeah, and also driving the story is foreign policy out of Biden's White House. I spoke with Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton uh, as this administration is trying hard to defend its decision to free up $6 billion to Iran just last month. Watch this. It's not just the $6 billion that was released from sanctions uh, controls last month. It's $10 billion that was released from Iraq into Iran. It's looking the other way on more than 80 attacks against American troops in, in uh, the Middle East or allowing Iran to threaten shipping in the Persian Gulf, allowing Iran without serious consequence to arm Russia to kill more Ukrainians releasing hundreds of millions of dollars to the Palestinian Authority since the very beginning of this administration. And of course, before this, uh, Doug, we were expecting a peace. We're being sold out. Between Saudi Arabia uh, and the other uh, GCC countries in the Middle East. Your thoughts? 
Yeah, it is. It's one of the most interesting things, Maria. It's amazing how silent the mainstream media was about the Abraham Accords and what was actually yeah. happening because they didn't want to associate it with Donald Trump. And they just sort of let it go. But I believe in the next few years, over the history, you're going to look back over three or four events, and that being the Abraham Accords and the possibility of peace. And then you're going to look at the Afghanistan withdrawal. You're also going to look at the, you know, the, the discussion here with Iran uh, and, and the things that have been going on with this administration. And these are going to become areas that you look back on and you see these were missed opportunities uh, to possibly have peace there. But what we're seeing now is just a, a divulging of, of the, down to the base uh, Hamas terrorists and the Iranian terrorists and their top terrorists in, in Iran saying, look, we're just going to cause chaos in this region. And they've used the cover of the Ukrainian war in China and others to, to uh, continue this process. Yeah, and meanwhile, in terms of the market impact here and the economic impact, Mark Tepper, uh, what are we seeing right now? Uh, a considerable uncertainty, and that has markets selling off. Dow Industrials down 172. It also has uh, oil prices uh, spiking as well. Your reaction to the impact? Uh, that we're going to see on a real economic uh, level. Well, and, th and then you just actually look at some, at how some of the, the stocks are doing in the pre-market. You have, obviously, very predictably, defense stocks are up quite a bit this morning. And then on the other side of the equation, you have travel stocks, whether it be the cruise lines or the airlines. Those are getting beaten up pretty badly this morning. Uh, and if we go back and we remember um, the last earnings calls for a lot of the airlines, whether it be Delta, United, American, they were talking about how great international travel has been for their earnings. I, I mean, there was so much pent up demand for Americans to travel abroad. Um, yeah. Looks like maybe that's not going to happen the way a lot of these airlines expected it, a way, the way a lot of American uh, consumers expected to, uh, to participate in travel over the course of the next year or so. But, you know, yeah. it, we'll, we'll see what happens. In fact, I'm seeing reports of uh, canceled flights. Certainly there was a Chinese flight, uh, the only Chinese flight, China to Israel has been canceled. Other airlines are, are looking at the schedule and uh, regrouping. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the White House is continuing to defend its decision, saying that the $6 billion originally released to Iran uh, is not helping uh, Hamas attack Israel. Deputy National Security Advisor under President Trump, Victoria Coates, is here to weigh in on that and more. You're watching live coverage of the war on Israel, live, Mornings with Maria on Fox Business. Now, does this not seem appalling to you, whoever gets a hold of this material of mine on my platform? It does to me. But, you know, these are things that I have known about for quite some time, and these are things that I've been talking about for quite some time, and I've just been ignored, totally ignored. A matter of fact, it went beyond just being ignored. There were certain people that was intentionally making my life hard or intentionally setting back that had the positions that they could have protected David and me. But up here in Dresden, Tennessee, they sat idly by towards not doing their jobs, hoping, hoping that I would take the bait or that my brother would take the bait towards basically uh, feeling like that we was forced in taking the law into our own hands. That's exactly what type of trap that had been laid in front of us. And David and I had discussed this several times before he wound up dying, either of a massive heart attack or whatever happened, aneurysm, whatever happened to him. Um, we discussed this several times. This was in 2017, whenever he died. And now five years later, look what's going on. Look what has went on pertaining to COVID and, and all the other exchanges that went along with COVID, along with what the petroleum um, typhoons have done to the world, and also with seeing what Russia has done pertaining to David and Goliath with the Ukrainians. It was a plan, and it was a plan to bring destruction to humanity. So whenever Ronald Reagan took that knowledge of biblical Bible prophecy and told the superpowers what he told them, did he really intend 
on enforcing that? Because if he did, the person that's talking to you right now in behind the camera, I feel like wouldn't have had to have went out west just to be able to have made a name for himself towards rolling up his sleeve and, and becoming a, an investigator in regards towards what went on in Waco, Mount Karma, in 1993, and then what happened in 1995 pertaining to the Oklahoma bombing. These things are all tied in together in what I'm talking about. There was certain people that talked the talk about peace, but in reality, they wasn't studying peace. They wasn't studying biblical Bible prophecy. A matter of fact, they was trying to end biblical Bible prophecy the same way that King Herod wanted to end biblical Bible prophecy in ordering for every male child from the age of two and below to be beheaded. These are massive movements that is now not just affecting the American people, but also affecting lives all over the world. And I really, really feel so, so sorry for the people over, over in Israel because they should have already done, been established in their stance and, and they shouldn't uh, be taking second seat to the enemy coming in there and slaughtering them the way that they are. I really feel so sorry for my brothers and sisters in the Lord over there pertaining to the Holy Land. My my deepest, most sincerest empathy and sympathy goes out to what has occurred because as far as I'm concerned, the fault falls upon certain people, not just in Washington, D.C., but right here, right here in Northwest Tennessee, that one day, one day, will give an account for the things that has occurred. They don't think that they will. They think that they're going to be under some sort of exemption. Like, oh, we're not going to, we're not going to be held accountable. We didn't have nothing to do with that. I got news for you. Those that could have, have taken part in supporting something that was worthwhile of supporting and didn't is going to be just as bad of those that physically emotionally, spiritually attacked this property at 291 Thompson Road or 430 Beach Grove Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 38255. They will be held accountable because of them standing idly by and allowing for it to happen. As a matter of fact, they went beyond. They went beyond. Hey, 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 hey. They went beyond just standing and watching. They was being entertained by it. They was waiting for the Romans to throw the Christians to the lions. So the Christians are the Christian, pertaining to myself, would be devoured. Well, now it's backfired on them, and now it's devouring the whole group. It's not just devouring one particular Christian or the Christians in, in, in exchange, but now it's devouring all of them. It's backfired on them, and this is proof in the pudding pertaining to that. And until the American people wake up, and until certain people um, get in there and do a clean house like Donald J. Trump wanted to do pertaining to draining the swamp, we're going to continue to have our lives turn totally upside down, not only with social media, not only with being trillions of dollars in debt, not only with... with uh, all these other problems that we've been experiencing for the past, I guess, 20-something years now, it's really been obvious um, that now it's affecting all of us, but it's only going to get worse. And that ain't even hitting on the subject pertaining to natural catastrophes that is steadily getting worse. You have to ask yourself, why would God turn his back on America towards allowing for these demonic figures or these forces of nature to come down and, and basically ravage us again and again and again. Well, apparently we must have done something wrong. Or somebody done something wrong that, that has caused the Heavenly Father to give us over, over to a reprobate and let us believe a lie and be damned like this. It began with the church world, the corporate church world that basically wanted not 
biblical Bible prophecy to be fulfilled is incompetent or he's being willfully blind here. Uh, I mean, the, the journal reported that hours after he was on. So if, if, our, if our Secretary of State doesn't have better intelligence than the newspaper, then we're really in a bad spot. And the $6 billion in many ways is, is sort of a canard. I mean, it obviously emboldened the Iranians. I'm sure they're happy to have that money, and it will certainly fuel their next attack. But what funded this one, Maria, and this is critical, is, is not necessarily that ransom payment in August. It's the two and a half years of unfettered oil exports to the People's Republic of China to the tune of some $70 billion that they've raked in uh, over this period. That's what fuels a terrorist attack like this. And that was the other thing in that report, that, that the Iranians have been very deliberately funneling money to Hamas and Hezbollah, to their terrorist proxies that are closest to Israel, because they want to attack Israel. Uh, that's that's their main priority. Now. Exactly, so, exactly. So the, the fact that the Biden administration stopped enforcing the sanctions that we put on the Iranian oil exports because, quite frankly, they want those barrels on the market because they don't want to produce them here at home and they want to keep energy prices down. That's that's what literally paid for the terrorist attack on Israel. Yeah, and this is a similar sentiment that we heard yesterday from Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. He joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures. Watch this. It's not just the $6 billion that was released from sanctions uh, controls last month. It's $10 billion that was released from Iraq into Iran. It's looking the other way on more than 80 attacks against American troops in, in uh, the Middle East or allowing Iran to threaten shipping in the Persian Gulf, allowing Iran without serious consequence to arm Russia to kill more Ukrainians releasing hundreds of millions of dollars to the Palestinian Authority since the very beginning of this administration. Uh, the Wall Street Journal is highlighting how the war in Israel has caused, quote, Biden's top foreign policy goals to hit turbulence, putting his foreign policy decisions into question uh, ahead of his re-election campaign, Victoria. Your reaction? And this is what Donald Trump was trying to tell us regarding allowing for these people to have all that oil that is basically financing, but you financing all the terrorist groups that have done already said... We're going to take you out. We're taking. We're beginning with Israel, and the next people will be uh, the United States. But yet, in all our borders is wide open, and we're allowing for how many people to come over here every day that we don't have a clue who they are, what they've done, or what their intentions are. You see my point? Towards it being appalling sides of the of the Ukraine war here, which is just insane. And in terms of the Palestinians, it's actually over a billion dollars that the administration has sent them. And we learned this morning that some European countries are prudently cutting off their aid to the Palestinians after this heinous attack, the Germans and the Austrians. I mean, I think somebody in Congress has to ask, you know, is the Biden administration going to do the same? Are they going to keep funneling money? into Gaza and West Bank for, that literally will be used for attacks on Israel. Well, Victoria, the next few days are obviously going to be critical in terms of uh, informing us of where the administration takes this next. The intensity of the combat operations, the Israeli mobilization, Netanyahu says this is going to be a long war, and of course the potential uh, for other actors. Do you worry? about Hezbollah uh, coming from Lebanon, uh, expanding or broadening this fight in the region? Oh, very much. And that was also in the journal reporting yesterday that, that the plan is that Hezbollah and from the north, that some militant groups in West Bank and then uh, Hamas down in Gaza will you know, literally strangle Israel if Israel tries to do a ground operation into into Gaza or even strikes Iran itself as it would be perfectly legitimate to do given that Iran is clearly the mastermind behind this and so you know they, they were hearing some good noises out of the administration uh, and they've, they've moved the Gerald R. Ford uh, in, in the Mediterranean to be closer to Israel that's our most our, our newest our only nuclear powered uh, aircraft carrier so very significant move 
But the problem they're about to run into is the Ford was in the Mediterranean to, to theoretically support any operations in Ukraine. Now it's supporting operations in, in Israel. So which, which is it? And, in, and for those of us who have been somewhat skeptical of the president's approach to Ukraine and have been very aggressively criticized for that skepticism, this has always been the issue. You know, is are we putting too much into Ukraine when we have, you know, obviously the threat from China, but for those of us who work on the Middle East, you know this is never uh, out of the question to have an eruption like this, and, and are we too distracted by Ukraine to attend to other matters? That's my main concern right now. Well, this is a very good point, and that is actually the crux of the fight going on right now within the Congress and uh, this debate on a House Speaker. Whether or not more money should go to Ukraine, that only intensifies now with war on Israel. Let me get your take on the possibility of peace here, given the fact that, you know, uh, it's been said that Iran was uh, upset, pushing back against the Saudis coming together with the other GCC countries of the Middle East. Uh, where does that stand now? No, this is this is I think very much what what triggered this particular attack is it was clear that the Saudis and the Israelis were getting closer and closer to a historic deal and you know you had the extraordinary interviews last month on on your sister network that uh, with both the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and with the Israeli Prime Minister, in which I mean, they basically laid it out that yeah, we're we're real close, we're about ready to go. And you know, I worked on the deals with UAE and Bahrain and Morocco, and you know, th those were incredible achievements, I think, for President Trump, and and really set set the table for for this deal. But the Saudi deal would be game changing and completely uh, alter the status of Israel, which is hugely in the best interests of the United States. And so, you know, regardless of who's president when it happens, it's, it's just a good thing. And the Iranians hate it. It means they would be more isolated. Uh, it means their attacks on Israel would be better defended against. And so I think that's what, that's what triggered them. They hate peace. They don't want things to get better for the people of the Middle East. They want to keep things in, in strife and conflict. Uh, so unfortunately, I think it's probably on hold uh, for the foreseeable future, but I, on the long term, I'm very hopeful that we, we'll get to a, a bigger and good deal. Yeah, and yet, you know, there is conversation about the Abraham Accords uh, in, in terms of not mentioning the Abraham Accords in the White House. The president came into office, President Biden, and, and tried to undo much of what you and your team did with regard to the Abraham Accords. Obviously, Secretary of State uh, then, uh, uh, Pompeo, uh, led that effort. What are your thoughts in terms of that result? Zooming again. I mean, there are worries now that we will see simultaneous attacks um, on Israeli targets in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq. Uh, are we at the beginning of a long, drawn-out new conflict in the Middle East? Well, that that certainly seems to be the Iranians' intent. And it, yeah, when when the Biden people first came into office, apparently there was a memo in the State Department saying, "Don't use the words Abraham Accords." We don't want to use that term. We, we'll call them normalization deals. And anyone who deals with the Middle East knows normalization That's is right. sort of a dirty word in the region. So, so yeah, they were trying to make them something, something sort of bad or suspect. But I will say to their credit, even they have realized this was just a good thing. It was just positive for everybody involved. And so they did start using the term Abraham Accords. They did start looking at the Saudi deal. Uh, unfortunately, I would say there are other really noxious policies towards Israel, uh, the very uh, sort of cold relationship between President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu, which is entirely on the side of, of this White House, uh, that that really, I think, ha has has caused a lot of the sort of distance between our two countries, which could be one of the things that, that led to the intelligence failure around this attack. Uh, so, so I think you know the, the relationship between Israel and the United States, which now it just reached its 75th year, and we have an event coming up at Heritage in a couple of weeks to celebrate that anniversary, which obviously now takes on a, a much greater gravity than it would have had uh, when we first when we first planned it. But that relationship needs to be institutionalized. It shouldn't be. 
subject to the whims of the personalities of individual politicians who might be in office at any given time it's too important the american people have invested way too much the israeli people obviously have invested way too much and i think we owe it to both of our populations to make this you know a special relationship that's just beyond question the way our alliance is with say the united kingdom all right victoria thanks very much for your insights and thank you for your leadership on the abraham accords we will talk with you soon Victoria Coates joining us this morning. I want to take a look at markets which are selling off. Uh, Dow Industrial is down about 150 right now. The bond market, of course, is closed today for the Columbus Day holiday, although there are bonds within ETFs that are trading bond funds. Take you wait till tomorrow. You think you're seeing uh, swings on that right now. You wait till tomorrow and the day after tomorrow in all this. The bottom line is this. America, our government, has gotten caught in burning the candle at both ends. And, you know, that they can be in denial all they want to about Saudis being our, our uh, allies. And I've actually heard David, one of our state representatives that gets on MSNBC, and he'd say stuff like, well, they're our allies, but whenever they're in the room, we kind of got to hold our noses. No, they're either for us or against us. And the bottom line is this, there were certain people that has formulated this within our own government that should be looked upon as being treasonous. Especially if you still want to put the plateau on your coattail by saying, oh, we're Christians. We're born-again believers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's unbelievable in what is occurring right now. And the thing about it is there's going to be more skirmishes by other parties that's going to pop up that's going to cause madness to the weak the feeble, the unfortunate, and yes, the Christians. And yes, the Christians. Uh, coming out, they kick off this week. We've got PepsiCo reporting tomorrow. We've got Delta Airlines reporting on Thursday. And then, of course, the major bank. They never did want the meek to inherit the earth. They wanted the demonic kingdom. They wanted the Luciferian Lucifer to, to establish his kingdom here upon to the earth. And now we're going through this... Uh, transformation period. Consumer price index out on Thursday. What are your expectations here and what are you looking at in terms of the imp impact on the macro story of potential recession in the year ahead? Um, I, I don't agree with your premise. I, I don't think anything's slowing at all. In fact, uh, you know, we are we just wrapped up Q3 2023. It's probably going to be a five percent real GDP quarter. I mean, that that's just that's just, that's not growth. That's a boom. S and P 500 forward earnings estimates a year ahead just reached new all time highs at 2.14 trillion just last Thursday. That is a recovery from their slump since June of last year when the Fed started tightening. They fell six percent. So. People wonder if we're going to have a recession. I say, no thanks. We've already had one. This is going to be a great earnings season. Uh, there's nothing about the last quarter that's going to start getting reported this week that has anything to do with even the worst case that could happen in Israel. So uh, wow. every, everything's not only going to be fine, it's going to be fabulous. So, so, Donald, then do you not worry about the impact of higher oil in terms of what that would mean for earnings? And it sounds to me like you would say, look, you've got a market that's down 140 on the Dow. You're going to buy into that? We, we see, we've seen oil prices from their lows in mid-year up 50 percent, right? And we've seen uh, forward estimates for the whole S&P 500 soar to new highs with that fully in the mix for more than three months. And in fact, weirdly enough, the energy sector is a laggard sector because oil prices were so low for so long. I happen to be speaking to you from Dallas, so yes, I am talking my book. But what we want in the American economy is for the energy producers and the energy consumers to be able to play well together. We're at oil prices right now where that is very, very possible. This is a growth optimal moment. Okay, all very good insights. And uh, we should point out that the market is off of the lows of the morning. Uh, NASDAQ down about 98 and the Dow down about 140. Donald, good to talk with you as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maria.
All right, Donald Luskin joining us, and we'll be right And what he's talking about is based upon the analogy before this occurred. Once more, he is a business sector person. He's done made it up in his mind towards what's going to occur, but yet now he's not smart enough to foresee that now the dynamics have changed, and because the dynamics has changed, so has that particular um, forecasting of profiteering. Because any time you upset the apple cart, we know, we know how how quickly it can affect everything else. Because we've seen it occur again and again and again this, this way. So obviously the last guy that you was listening to, I don't know, maybe he's not aware uh, of the imbalances that it's going to cause pertaining to a major a major war over in the Middle East. Besides that, we got other areas to look at pertaining to China and what that they have done in stealing a great deal of our intel and, and taking stuff from us and restructuring it, restructural, restructuralizing it towards building it for about a third of the price of what we could build it on. These was people that was seeing us get the cart in front of the horse going into the 90s, the Bill Clinton era, that once more, one administration versus the other administration has 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 either neg neglect neglectedly done this to us or they have intentionally done this to us. I don't know which, but anytime you're a nation at $33 trillion in debt and you got this kind of commotion going on within our own structure, you got a problem. And other people can see not only that we have a problem, but they're going to see this as an opportunity of weakness. And if there's ever been a time that we needed to be more vigilant, because there's there's sales right here in America that can be formulating right now and looking at this the same way that I'm talking about towards it being an opportunity opportunity for everybody to do a pile on. That's what they done to me for three consecutive years whenever I come back here in 20 and 14. Certain people that have been brainwashed about Juby being the bad guy. Juby's the black horse. Juby's the black horse. Juby's the antichrist. Juby serves the devil. Juby's of the devil. Well, let's just attack Juby. And they done a pile on. And because it was a pile on, emotionally speaking, and to some degree, physically speaking, it was too much for my brother to handle. That's the reason why I say that there are certain people in weekly county courts that needs to be charged with dereliction of duty. And as far as I'm concerned, they need to be shamed out of their positions. Thank you. Good luck to all of us. God bless America. God bless our troops. And I can't say it enough. Heaven, heaven not only help us, Please help us, but please help our allies pertaining to what's going on right now over in in um, in Israel because these things are only going to drastically get worse before they get better. God bless and shalom.